I've done this activity in class before with actual students and it causes actual panic, so I'm not going to pretend that this is real. Let's just say it's test day and you forgot to study. There are only five multiple choice questions that you have to answer and each one has only four choices. And you're feeling daring, so you're just going to guess without even looking at the questions. These first two questions on the guided notes are both review from the last video. Number one, is this a binomial setting where x is the number of correct guesses or the number of questions you get right? And two, calculate the probability of getting exactly two right. Pause the video and do just one and two. Do not go on to the rest because I'm going to show you a shortcut. Just do one and two and then hit play. So it's probably not a surprise, but yes, this is binomial. It's binary because there's only two options for each trial. You either get the question right or wrong. Independent because each question is completely independent of the others. Now that's only if you're truly guessing on each question. If you just picked C for each question, like your guess on number two is kind of influenced by number one, or if you picked like A, C, D, C, you know, like then they're not really independent, but we're gonna say you're actually guessing. N, we have a set number of trials. There's only five questions. And S, we have the same probability on each question. You have a 25% chance of getting each question right. Like we did in the last video, this is the probability that x equals two. We start out by finding the number of ways that we could have two successes out of five. So this is five, um, and then you do NCR on your calculator, and then two. We have the probability of success raised to the second because we have two successes. Probability of failure raised to the third because we have three fails. And there is a 26.4% chance that you get two out of five questions right. All right, I promised a shortcut, so here's the shortcut. On your calculator, we have a function called binome PDF. Let me show you where that is. So it's actually in the same place as norm CDF. You click second and then vars, which says D-I-S-T-R, so distribution above it. Here's norm um, PDF and CDF. If we go down towards the bottom of the list, we have binome PDF and binome CDF. Click on binome PDF, and if you have a fancy calculator, it's going to say trials, p, and x value. So you're going to put in the number of trials, the probability of success, and the x value that you are interested in. Hit enter. That's it. Now if you have an older calculator or a not updated calculator, you will just type 5, 0.25, 2. Same as always, you just have to remember the order of those numbers. You don't get the menu. To show your work when you're using the calculator, you should write out binome PDF and then include N, P, and X when you're writing out what you typed in. Okay, so that was the probability of getting two correct. Um, why don't you take a moment, practice using binome PDF, and fill out the rest of the probabilities in this table. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, so here are our probabilities. You can see that it's most likely that you will not do too well on this quiz. For four and five, we're supposed to find and interpret the mean and the standard deviation. You can do this by hand, or you can do it using one var stats. Pause the video and do that now. All right, so here's our mean. I did this one by hand, just x times each probability and add them all up. So that means we can expect to get 1.2529 questions right out of five. And then for standard deviation, I used the calculator because I didn't feel like doing that by hand. I did one var stats. Mine was typed into L3 and L4. There's my standard deviation, and the typical number of correct answers varies by about 0.9692 questions from the mean of 1.25 out of 5. It rolls right off the tongue. All right, now, as promised, more shortcuts. When you have a binomial distribution, there is a shortcut for calculating mean. Mu, or the mean of x, is just n times p. In this case, that's 5 times 0.25, we get 1.25. That's always true if you have a binomial distribution. Similar for standard deviation, we have a shortcut. The standard deviation of x, if x is binomial, square root n p 1 minus p. So here that's 5 times 0.25 times 0.75. Take the square root. Look at that. You get the exact same thing. And as always, you do not have to memorize. On the formula sheet, it says if x has a binomial distribution, and it gives you the formula for mean, and the formula for standard deviation. So no memorization necessary. Let's move on to these probability questions. I'm going to start these with you and then you'll do them on your own because I'm going to show you even more shortcuts. 
what's the probability of getting at most three correct? I always start these problems by writing out what we're asked to find in symbols. So this is asking us to find the probability that x is less than or equal to three. At most three would be zero, one, two, or three. Now we could do this one at a time. Probability of zero, one, two, and three, and then we could add them all together. It's a little bit faster now that we have binome PDF, but that's still a pain and there is a faster way. It's called binome CDF. That C stands for cumulative. What binome CDF does is it adds up all the probabilities up to and including the X value that you put in. So here's a quick sketch of these probabilities from this quiz example. You can see it's most likely that you'll get a zero, one, or two, very unlikely you'll get a three, four, or five. What CDF does is if you put in two for X, it's gonna add this probability, this probability, and this one, and give you that as the final answer. PDF, if you put in two for X, you're only gonna get the probability that X equals two. CDF gives you everything up to and including the X value you put in. So since we want X less than or equal to three, we're gonna do binome CDF, 5.25, and then three. You find this in the exact same place as before. It's second and then distribution, and it's right underneath PDF, binome CDF. The same menu will pop up, or you'll just have to type things in separated by commas. And that's so much easier than doing PDF for all these individual probabilities and adding them together. As long as you remember that the C stands for cumulative, so it's everything up to and including that X value. So with that in mind, look at number seven. What's the probability of getting three or more correct? This is not less than or equal to, this is greater than or equal to. What's the probability of getting three or more? So three or four or five. Why don't you take a moment and see if you can figure out how to do this using binome CDF. Pause the video. Sometimes it helps me in a problem like this to write out all the outcomes and then think about what we want. We want three or more, which is this, three, four, or five which is everything but zero, one, and two. So we can use our complements rule that we learned about earlier in this unit and do one minus probability that X is less than or equal to two. So one minus and then binome CDF, 5.25 and two. That will leave us with only the three, four, and five. So some students choose to just memorize this. When you're dealing with equals, use PDF less than use CDF, greater than use one minus CDF. I would hesitate to memorize and I would prefer that you think through it logically. I think that's gonna last a little bit longer in your brain if you're not memorizing. Okay, um, I have some typos on mine, but it's fixed on yours. Why don't you pause the video and try doing the check your understanding problem on your own. Not surprisingly, we have a binomial distribution here. Um, for whatever reason, this set of parents thinks that type O blood is a success and everything else is a failure. It's a little harsh. Um, independent, one child's blood type doesn't affect the others. I'm pretty sure that that is true, that the new child to be born doesn't know what the other children's blood types were, so the other kids don't influence the new kid. Um, we have a set number of trials. For some reason, this set of parents is convinced they're gonna have exactly six kids. I don't know why. And the success of having a type O blood kid is 0.3. Once again, I don't know if that's actually possible or true. Um, it just fit this example, so we're going with it. To find and interpret the mean, well, we know it's binomial, so we can use our shortcut. Just n times p, 1.8 kids. We expect them to have 1.8 kids with type O blood out of six. Make sure you do mention out of six and make sure you have context. So don't just say the mean is 1.8. You need to say 1.8 kids out of six have type O blood, like include as much context as possible. For the standard deviation, once again, we can use our shortcut, n times p times one minus p, and then square root all that, we get 1.12. So the number of kids with type O blood out of six will typically be about 1.12 kids away from the mean of 1.8 kids. Once again, we've got context. We're talking about type O blood and kids. The probability that they will have exactly two children, I'm using binome PDF, 6.3 and two. Notice that I've written out everything I typed into my calculator so that you know what I was thinking. 
the probability that they will have three or fewer children, so this is x less than or equal to three, so I'm using binomes CDF, 6.3 and 3, and then the probability that they have four or more children. This would be 1 minus the probability that they have three or less, so 1 minus x less than or equal to 3. And what do you know? We already found x less than or equal to 3. It was right here. So I can just do 1 minus the answer I got in number 5. Okay, that was really quick. Um, as always, the more you do these, the easier they're going to be. The tricky part of binomial distributions once we get out of this unit is recognizing them in the wild. So like, it'll be May, we'll be doing a free response question to prepare for the AP test, and someone will be like, we never did this. And as soon as I say, it's binomial, it's super easy, which is why it's so important that you learn this and practice more than just these quick examples we did here. Really spend the time to get to know binomial distributions so that you can recognize them in the wild.